Okay, so this is my Samsung adaptive fast charger that I use at work. And the other day I was there and one of my other Sparkies came up to me and said, hey, uh, I think your charger stopped working. And I had already tried to plug it in to charge my phone partway through my 12 hour shift. And it didn't work, no power at all. It was totally dead to the world. So I come home, I bring it home. I tried to get it apart already, as you can see by the gouge marks there. I'm probably gonna have to dremel the end of it off to get it open. But if I go ahead and turn it on, I've got 1.7 amps pulling on it right now. And it seems to be working perfectly fine. I think it'll go up to about 2.2 2 or 2.4. There's 2.2 amps. Uh, I saw 2.2. Interesting, this is still on and it's still producing power. I think, and it says five volts, but it's not showing on the display. So I think it glitched and it killed the display. So I'm gonna shut it off and then turn it back on. And did you see that the display came on for just a second and then it went off. But I noticed that if I twisted it, well, it's not gonna do it now. So it's on. Yeah, so what is going on? Now it's working fine. 2.1 amps. I don't think it's the connector. So I think I'm gonna dremel this thing open and see if I can see maybe a bad solder connection inside or a bulge cap or something. Um, it shouldn't be trying to go to nine volts right now just because I don't have a device plugged into it that can communicate. And as you can see, uh, if it'll focus, there we go. Uh, it's rated at five volts, two amps, and it exceeded that, or nine volts at 1.67 amps. And that's if the device can actually uh, talk through the USB connector to it. So I think I will try to uh, dremel it open and see what it looks like inside if we see anything. One moment. Okay, well there is what I can see after I dremeled the lid off of the thing. Now I think a lot of these just plugged in, so I'm wondering if I can just hook my fingernail under that. Oh, it's in there. Uh, let me grab a pair of pliers. And I see a little area on the board right there where there's no components populated. So give it a tug and there it is. And look what I see right off the bat. Uh, let me put this in the macro mode one moment. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but that one connection is completely burnt on the fuse. Dong Yang E N P E N P I think. So it looks like July 16th of 21 was when the circuit board design was made. There is where it connects to the, the prongs, the pins. Everything looks like it's been hot. What about the other side? Oh yeah, look how hot that's been. Look at that. And that is a fuse, 1.25 amps. And completely, completely broken free. Look, you can even see light through that pin. So was it just a bad solder connection from the factory possibly that did this? Let's try for a different angle here. There we got good focus. It doesn't look like that they did a really good job of connecting. It looks like they added solder to the pins. And then down inside here, let's see if I can 
show that if it'll focus down in there. There are just a couple of spring-loaded tabs, basically, that grab onto the circuit board, but it's definitely been warm. Um, pretty poor design, in my estimation, at least. I wonder what the blue paint splatter is on there. Yeah, there you can kind of see the, uh, the spring terminals that grab the circuit board, which is why it was hard to pull out. So let's just take a look at this board. A couple more components than I was expecting, that's for sure. There's the little chip that uh, controls it. What is, oh, that's just a piece of fuzz. Bunch of surface mounts. There's one of the FETs, or maybe that's one of the diodes. For the rectifier out of the transformer, possibly. Little surface mount IC right there. BH4AFS603MPB, it looks like. A little bit of hand soldering going on there. There's probably the switching FET right there, and you can see they got a good uh, divider in between the hot side and the cold side right there. So, a little bit of protection there, probably on the feedback circuit, a little bit of silicone smeared on the board, but I think that's gonna be the problem. The fuse is broken loose. I wonder if I try to wiggle it. Of course, I can't hold the board still and try to wiggle it at the same time. Three millimeter spacing. And we don't have a spacing ruler on that side. There's a bridge rectifier right there. And there's the main filter cap and an inductor. It is at least 105 degrees Celsius rated cap. Whether it is or not is another story. Not bulged in the least. Inrush thermistor it looks like right there. And Looks like they might be doing a pie filter network on the input side, possibly. Another 105 degree rated cap right there. There's a 15 at 35, probably the bootstrap cap to get the thing started. Uh, I can't really see the values on these guys, but it's not going back together, so I don't really care at this point. So that is a 12 microfarad capacitor at 400 volts. And this one is a 15 at 400. There is the switching transformer on the secondary side. And then there is the, I'm sorry, on the primary side over here. And then there is the secondary side over there. I would expect to see a couple of big diodes Unless that is the diode right there that they're using. Huh, it's got leads on both ends. Isn't that interesting? Oh no, I'm sorry, that's the USB connector. My bad. Spark gap right there, six millimeters. Huh, well it doesn't look like it's too terribly badly designed. There's the output filter, 330 at 12 volts. A lot of shielding, or at least plastic, to keep arcs at bay. HT Con is the manufacturer of the plastic, at least, of the USB connector, it looks like. Doesn't look like it's too terribly uh, badly designed, other than that fuse where it solders in. Uh, double wound secondary, it looks like, right there. So I'm wondering if this IC right there has the rectification and filtering, or rectification at least, built into it. Uh, not Big Clive. I'm not going to reverse engineer this. I know it takes him a long time to figure this out. 
there is a bridge rectifier right there, and that is on the secondary side, so maybe that is what they're actually using. It looks like it very well may be. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's the optical isolator between the input and the output. That's what that is. So, yeah. Okay, well, there's a look at the failure point of this Samsung charger made by Dong Yang E and P Energy and Power Solution. And we'll try to get a close up on the tag here with the model number. This one is a EP-TA20JBE. It is multi voltage 102 240 volts. 0.5 amps, so they have a 1.25 amp fuse in there, and then, like I said previously, 9 volts at 1.67 amps or 5 volts at 2 amps. Okay, well, thanks for uh, riding along for this look at the Samsung Adaptive Fast Charger Failure. All right, everybody have a great day. There must be a thermistor underneath that transformer, which is what that wire is for, or a thermal fuse. I don't see where it goes. I don't see the other end coming out anywhere. Yeah, because I'm not seeing it on that end. Fold that down. So it does connect to one of the pins. All right, there you go. Once again, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.